Zero to hero. Just like that. <laughs> everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is so good to see you. I hope you all have had a fabulous week and are ready for another fun ranking video. Thank you all so much for the love on last week's video. Ranking Disney pets was definitely one of my favorite ones I've done so far. And yes, believe me, the ranking Disney sidekicks is coming. Trust me when I say I'm putting a lot of love and care into that video and I'm gonna make sure to get every single character that you all wanna hear about. But as for today, we're talking about the heroes. Heroes is quite a vast term, but we are gonna break it down and and we're gonna select all the right characters that belong on this list and we're gonna rank them from worst to best. So before we get started, leave it down in the comments. Who is your favorite Disney hero? The first character that pops into your head when you think of the word hero. And if you're excited for the video, make sure to like and subscribe so that way you never miss magic from me. Because I have a lot of video ideas for the future. I really want to do a Disney kids video. I want to do Disney animals. I want to do Disney sidekicks. I want to do Disney soundtracks, Disney songs. There are a lot of categories that I want to go through for the Walt Disney brand. And if you have any categories you would like me to touch on, make sure to leave them down below. Because again, getting to talk to you guys down in the comments is one of my absolute favorite things to do. Now you may have already seen on my channel that we did a full ranking Disney heroines video. That one was so fun to make. It was so great getting to talk about female Disney characters that we really don't hear about because the princesses get such a bright spotlight. And today we're going to do the exact same thing but for our male character friends. Considering the princes are really the most iconic of the Disney male characters, we're going to give some love to the unsung heroes today. But keep in mind, heroes come in a lot of shapes and sizes, so there may be some characters on today's video that you maybe didn't expect to see. But believe you me when I say they are all very deserving. All right, I am ready and so excited to get into today's video. So really quick, let's get through some disclaimers and conditions for today's list, and then we'll get into the ranking. First and foremost for the disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company. This video is all just my opinions, and my opinions do not reflect those of the company. Secondly, I welcome any and all opinions on this channel, make sure to leave all of your thoughts down below and let me know your opinions on which Disney heroes would have ranked towards the top for you. Before our conditions, there are some specific conditions for the list today as to what characters we're going to be talking about. The conditions for today's list are that these characters must be an animated male character created by the Walt Disney Company. That being said, we once again won't have characters from Pixar, Lucasfilms, 20th Century Fox, or any other outside companies. And while there are some animal characters on this list today, I'm trying to keep as many animals off of this list because there are a lot of animal videos I want to do in the future. And I want to make sure I give everybody their spotlight because they all deserve it. And much like that heroines video, there are some specific touch points that I want to hit for each of the characters on today's list. Those five touch points include, number one, the purpose that they serve in their movie. Are they a main character? Do they sort of sit in the background? What sort of energy do they bring to their movie? Number two is the character design. Number three is the voice acting. Number four is their song, if they have a song or we'll talk about the lack thereof. And now for number five, in the heroines video, number five on their list was what prevented them from making it into the Disney princess lineup. Unfortunately, there really is no Disney prince lineup. The princes are really just the significant others of the princesses. So we're gonna switch up the fifth point for today's video and we're gonna talk about what is the heroic act that landed them their spot on this list today. And because there are so many incredible Disney heroes, we are going to be limiting today's list to only 15 characters. Much like the heroines video, because we want to keep it even. And believe me, we have a lot to talk about today, so without further ado, let's get into the ranking of Disney heroes. We are starting off our list at number 15 today, who is Taryn from The Black Cauldron. Now you guys have heard me talk a lot about The Black Cauldron. I've pretty much mentioned it in almost every video that I've done. I consider it to be the black sheep of the Disney movies because so few people know about it, but I kind of really love it. And while I tend to rank Black Cauldron things relatively high, I have to say Tarn is not one of my favorite parts of the Black Cauldron. But I'm gonna be completely honest, at the beginning of his movie, he really gives off princess energy. He talks openly about wanting to go out into the world and to be more than what he actually is now. He has wonderful spirit and wonderful energy, However, the way that he banters with other characters, specifically Princess Ailanwi, can get a little annoying sometimes. So while he is a good character with a pure heart and the best of intentions, there are definitely certain moments of his personality that just aren't my favorite. Now, Tarin serves as the protagonist for the film. He, along with Princess Ailanwi and Fluter Flam, go on this big adventure 
to rescue the land from the Horned King. And Tarn just so happens to be the character that we follow throughout the entire movie. For the character design, Tarn is relatively simple. He's drawn to be a young boy around the age of 14. He is a redhead. He carries a sword. Well, at least more than halfway through the movie he does. And he has a simple green outfit that I think suits him relatively well. As for the voice acting, Tarn was performed by Grant Bardsley. Tarn does not have a song in his movie as The Black Cauldron is not a musical. And the heroic the heroic act that lands him a spot on today's list is saving the kingdom from the Black Cauldron. And while it could be argued that he specifically didn't save the kingdom from the Black Cauldron, a lot of people will point to Gurgi for that. He is the head of the expedition. He is the reason all of these characters have ended up in the situation that they are in. And even though, spoiler alert, Gurgi is the one that actually self-sacrifices into the Black Cauldron, it's actually Tarin that originally was going to do it. But again, spoiler alert, luckily enough, all of our characters make it out safe in the end. And so, no harm done, and his task was complete. So consider this being part blank of me trying to make the Black Cauldron more mainstream. Is it gonna happen? Probably not, because Disney is really not in the mood to push this film out because it is very dark and scary. But I love it, and I'm gonna talk about it in my videos because... I think it's really cool and so different from anything else Disney's done. But with that, we will move on to number 14 on my list, who is Arthur from The Sword in the Stone. Now this character definitely doesn't get a lot of love, but he does deserve the recognition. For his purpose, Arthur is a young boy who is being brought up in the castle and unknowingly is the future destined King of England. He is taken in by Merlin as an apprentice, learning the ways of the kingdom and eventually journeying to pull the sword out from the stone. For his character design, he is a young boy with blonde hair and a relatively simple peasant outfit. Although at the end of his film, he is heralded a little bit more and therefore dressed up to look the part. Now this is one of the most interesting facts about this character and I kind of love talking about it, the voice acting. Ricky Sorensen was the original speaking voice of Arthur. Because Sorensen was so young during production, he actually hit puberty and his voice dropped. And the production team, still favoring a younger Arthur, wanted to stick with voices that were still higher and more youthful. And so they turned to the two sons of one of the production members, and Richard and Robert Reitherman were the other two voice actors that stepped in to help give him his voice. And what's so interesting about these three young voice actors is that you can very clearly hear the difference in Arthur's voice, not only from scene to scene, but also within the same scene. It very much sounds like multiple people are voicing the same character. And that's kind of what I love about this character is we don't really see that anywhere else in the Disney canon. There are many characters that have different singing and speaking voices, however they generally sound kind of cohesive. But with Arthur, there is no such thing. He very much sounds like he has multiple different voices in different scenes. And if you haven't seen this movie in a while, I definitely recommend a rewatch to see if you can pick out the specific moments where the voice actor changes. But moving on, once again, The Sword in the Stone is not a musical and therefore there is no song for Arthur. And as for the heroic act, I think it's relatively safe to say his act of heroism is pulling the sword from the stone, of which I have still never been successful in the Magic Kingdom, but one of these days hopefully. <laughs> but with that we will move on to number 13 on my list, one that I think a lot of people will be happy to see. And number 13 is Emperor Kuzco from The Emperor's New Groove. Now Kuzco is a sassy and hysterical emperor who is absolutely chaotic but so fun to watch on screen. The buddy comedy moments between him and Pacha are just absolutely fantastic. And overall is he the most heartfelt character? No, not really, but I think there is definitely a place for him in many people's hearts. For the purpose that he serves in his movie, Emperor Kuzco is the leading protagonist and he generally shares top billing with the character of Pacha. For his character design, he is relatively thin with longer dark hair and an emperor's costume, although for the majority of his film he spends it as a llama. For the voice acting, Cusco is voice acted by David Spade, and although there are some songs in the film and some background music, Emperor Cusco does not have a song of his own. Which leads us to the topic of the heroic act, because many may be thinking what is this heroic act and what makes him end up on the heroes list. Well, while he may not necessarily have one specific heroic act, I think a big part of where he sits in people's hearts is his change of heart. Considering he starts out as a very self-centered emperor who cares little to none about what anybody else wants. At the beginning, literally wanting to destroy the area on which Pacha's house sits. However, by the end of his journey with Pacha, he fully comes around and is starting to understand empathy and other people's feelings. And I think even though he's just at the beginning of that, that definitely 
definitely deserves him a spot on the list. Because there are other characters who are very self-centered that never come around. And so I want to give Cusco the recognition he deserves. And with that, we're going to move on to number 12 on my list. Now the character that landed at number 12, I originally didn't know if I wanted him on this list, and we're going to get into why. But I feel justified in placing and keeping him on this list today. At number 12 is Kenai from Brother Bear. This character's plot and arc is extremely complex. For first time viewers, they may not think so. However, once we get to the three quarter mark in the movie and the backstory is explained as to exactly what Kenai did, things get a little tense and complex. So if you haven't seen Brother Bear or if you don't want spoilers for the movie, I would definitely skip on to number 11 on the list. But for those of you who don't care about spoilers or have seen the movie, Let's get into it. The purpose that Kenai serves in his movie is quite interesting and varies depending on whose point of view you're looking at. For Kenai, he is the protagonist. He has done no wrong and he is just trying to get to the place where the lights touch the earth in order to turn back into a human. From Koda's perspective at the beginning of the movie, Kenai just seems like an older big brother who can help him get back to the salmon run. However, after Kenai hears Koda's story, he very quickly becomes an antagonistic character considering Kenai is the reason for the demise of Koda's mother. Definitely one of the most complex characters on this list. For his character design, he starts off with shorter dark hair and wears fur as a coat and pants. However, he spends the majority of his film not as a human, but rather as a bear. Kenai was voice acted by Joaquin Phoenix. And while there are definitely songs in this movie, Kenai does not sing. And as for the heroic act, this was the point that almost kept Kenai off of this list. When I was first sitting down and thinking about all of this, I said to myself, his heroic act is at the very end of feeling the need to stay in bear form in order to raise Coda. But what almost took him off this list is the fact that he needed to go through with ending Coda's mother's life in order to do that act of heroism. I still kind of struggle with putting him on this list. Much like Cusco, I feel like this character's arc is eventually what gets him to the point of heroism because he did what he did and there's no justifying it. So from here going forward, he's going to do everything he can to set up the best situation going forward, especially not abandoning Coda. Considering Coda is so young and really does need an influential grown up in his life. So while it's not the easiest thing to call Kenai a hero, I think definitely at the end of his movie, he makes a very bold decision that I don't know if a lot of people could make. And so I will give him credit for choosing to be the adopted older brother to Coda. But with that, we move on to number 11 on my list, a name that I know a lot of you are going to recognize, who is Simba from The Lion King. Now Simba once again serves as the main character of his movie. At the beginning of his movie, he starts off as a lion cub with his father Mufasa. However, after his uncle Scar ends the life of his father Mufasa, Simba is forced into exile, and only later comes back to his homeland, the Pride Lands, after Nala convinces him to come back and take his rightful place as the king of the Pride Lands. As for his character design, he is just a relatively simple lion. Although it is cute, we get to see him both as a young character and a fully grown up lion character. And if you've seen the Disney heroine video, you will know that Nala has four voice actresses. Well, I'm here to report that Simba, in fact, has her beat. Simba has five voice actors in his his original film. Here we go. They are Matthew Broderick as the speaking voice of adult Simba, Joseph Williams the singing voice of adult Simba in voiceover form. Much like Nala, the actual lions aren't singing the song, they happen in voiceover, but it's presumed to be their voices. Jonathan Taylor Thomas is the speaking voice of young Simba. Jason Weaver is the singing voice of young Simba. And Evan Saucedo, Saucedo is the singing voice of young Simba on the song The Morning Report on the Platinum Edition of The Lion King soundtrack. That's a lot of people to bring one lion to life. <laughs> For his song, Simba does sing on a few different songs, but his main songs are I Just Can't Wait to Be King When He Is Young and Can You Feel the Love Tonight as an Adult. And as for the heroic act, Simba returns to the Pride Lands and defeats his evil uncle and takes his place as the rightful ruler of the Pride Lands and restores it to the place that it once was when his father ruled. Simba has quite a great story. However, I am not shy when I say my favorite rendition of this story is the Broadway performance. If you haven't seen The Lion King on Broadway and have the opportunity to, I highly recommend. But with that, we'll move on to number 10 on my list, who is Robin Hood from Robin Hood. <laughs> 
Now, Robin Hood tells the story of the famous merry man who is known for stealing from the rich to give to the poor. However, in Disney's rendition, he is a fox character, who very much acts like a human. As for the purpose he serves in his movie, he is the main protagonist, and his entire story revolves around undoing the harsh and, frankly, unjust decisions of Prince John in the town of Nottingham. For his character design, he is a fox character in Old English attire, and he also consistently has a bow with him as he is a very good archer. Robin Hood was wonderfully voice acted by Brian Bedford. As far as I know, Robin Hood does not sing in his movie. And as for the heroic act, Robin Hood saves the town of Nottingham from the evil Prince John and all of his taxes. <laughs> he is such a great character and I really love Robin Hood. I really just wish Disney had made the decision to keep these characters human because then they could have had a much bigger park presence and Maid Marian might have been included in the Disney princess lineup, which might have made Robin Hood become a Disney prince. But regardless, there aren't a lot of movies like this. So I do think Disney's decision does distinguish this story from a lot of their other common fairy tales. At number nine on my list is a name that I don't think a lot of people will anticipate being on here, but I think he's deserving nonetheless. At number nine is Lieutenant Matthias from Frozen 2. Now, I love this character. He's the first character on this list to really not be a main protagonist. However, to Frozen 2, he is so important and so vital, and so I think we need to give him the spotlight he deserves. Lieutenant Matthias is a side character in his movie, so he doesn't have a lot of input on the main plot points of the movie, but where he comes into play is in the final battle with the rock giants and the destruction of the dam. For his character design, he is a soldier and a guard for the kingdom of Arendelle. However, he's been lost in the enchanted forest and surrounded by fog for years and years and years. And so it's kind of funny to see him brought back into the town and how his fashion sort of changes from when he's in the forest versus when he gets out of the forest. Lieutenant Matthias was voiced by Sterling K. Brown. He does not have a song in Frozen 2. And as for his heroic act. Lieutenant Matthias faces a very strong moral dilemma right at the very end of the movie, and really has to make a split-second decision. To his knowledge, King Runard built the dam in order to keep Arendelle safe. However, what Lieutenant Matthias doesn't know is that the dam must fall in order to break the curse on the Enchanted Forest. Anna runs up with this plan in mind and very quickly has to explain this to him. And seeing as they all believe that Queen Elsa has passed, Lieutenant Matthias now knows that Anna is the true heir of Arendelle. Trusting that she knows the truth, he instructs his men to help her lead the giants to the dam in order to break it. And then also helps to rescue Queen Anna, along with Kristoff, when the dam breaks while she is still on it. I think Lieutenant Matthias is a wonderful character who does not get the recognition he deserves. And I think if he had not been involved in the ending of Frozen 2, it could have ended quite differently. So with that, we'll move on to number eight on my list, who is Tarzan from Tarzan. Now this character is so incredibly wonderful and really unlike any other character Disney's ever created. Tarzan is the protagonist of his film and he's the character we follow from when he is very very young all the way to when he grows up. Having been orphaned when he was very very young he is brought up by the gorillas and becomes one of them. And so when he is faced with meeting and interacting with human characters it is really interesting to get to watch Tarzan learn about his own species. For his character design he has longer brown hair, he is very muscular and really only wears a loincloth. Possibly the reason we don't see him a lot in character meet and greets. <laughs> As for the voice acting, Tony Goldwyn was the speaking voice for Tarzan, and Alex D. Linz was the voice of young Tarzan in the younger scenes. For the song, it can be argued that a lot of the music in Tarzan is actually from the point of view of Tarzan. However, all of the songs are sung by Phil Collins and not by the characters in this movie. So a lot of these anthems could be about and for Tarzan, but he doesn't necessarily sing them. And while I love Phil Collins' voice on this entire album, I do wish for the movie that there were a few songs reserved for the characters to sing. But with that, we will bring it to the heroic act, which is of course Tarzan freeing the gorillas from Clayton's grasp and deciding to stay with them along with Jane instead of going back to the mainland in England. Oh, this one is just such a heartwarming story and I love the ending of this movie. And with that, we'll move on to number seven on my list, who is Phoebus from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now Phoebus is absolutely hysterical. If you haven't already seen my Disney Pets video, I'm going to link it up here, but my goodness, 
He has such an incredible joke that makes me laugh every single time, and if you want to know about it, you should go check out that video. Now, Phoebus serves as the third main character of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, after Quasimodo and Esmeralda. And as for the character design, he looks like just a regular royal guard. He has blonde hair and a really nice soldier's uniform. Phoebus was perfectly voice acted by Kevin Klein, who adds such a fun, spunky personality and great dry humor to the character. Phoebus does not have a song in his film, although the Hunchback soundtrack is amazing. And as for the heroic act, when Claude Frollo is destroying the city of Paris in order to try to find Esmeralda, Phoebus very bravely revolts against him, refusing to carry out his horrible orders, and helps the citizens of Paris rally against Judge Claude Frollo, eventually being one in the many cogs that it takes to save the city of Paris. I absolutely love Phoebus as a character. I think he is is truly an unsung hero, and I am happy to give him a place on today's list. And with that, we'll move on to number six on my list, who is Maui from Moana. Now, this musical demigod is quite a bit to handle, but he is such a fun character, again, unlike any other character Disney has created. For the purpose in his film, he is the secondary main character, just trailing behind our main princess Moana. For his character design, he is a really big and muscular demigod with long dark hair and a grass skirt. But we also can't forget his magical fish hook, which allows him to turn into different animals. Again, adding to a lot of his comedy. For the voice, probably one of the most iconic things about Maui, Maui was performed by Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And luckily for us, we're going to be getting a whole nother version of Maui when Dwayne The Rock Johnson reprises his role in the live-action Moana. Which leads us into Maui's song, You're Welcome. This is such a fun song that just perfectly shows off Maui's comedically conceited personality. And if I'm not wrong, I think he's one of the first Disney characters to ever rap in a song. But as for his heroic act, he successfully travels across the sea with Moana and helps her to restore the heart of Tefiti. And in doing so, this saves all of the islands from the lack of life that Tefiti is able to provide all of them. I think it's pretty safe to say Moana and Maui make quite a great team. And if Maui were to thank me for putting him at number six on my list, I'd only have one thing to say. You're welcome. <laughs> but with that, we have reached the top five on my list of Disney heroes. Again, if your favorite hero hasn't made it yet, make sure to leave them down below. But at number five, a hero that is probably unlikely to make a lot of other lists, but is more than deserving on this one, is Pinocchio from the movie Pinocchio. Now, just because this character is young and quite naive, does not mean that he has one of the best character arcs in any Disney movie, establishing himself not only as strong, brave, and true, but also a true hero. As for the purpose in his movie, Pinocchio is the main character, and again, that means we follow him throughout the majority of his story, seeing his every move and his every decision and everything that he learns along the way, both good and bad. As for his character design, Pinocchio is a wooden puppet with an adorable outfit with a little yellow hat and some overalls, but of course we also have to mention at the very end of the film, he gets turned into a real boy after he proves to the Blue Fairy that he is truthful and unselfish. For the voice acting, Pinocchio is performed by Dickie Jones, and he has a few songs in his movie, including An Actor's Life for Me, I've Got No Strings, and Give a Little Whistle. And as for the act of heroism, after making a lot of mistakes, Geppetto, his father, ends up in the belly of a whale monstro, and Pinocchio sacrifices himself to free his father, presumably losing his life in the process Process, however, getting it restored by the Blue Fairy at the end of the movie. Pinocchio is such an incredible character, and for all of the moments of young naivete that he has, he really has a wonderful and good heart, and is willing to do anything to rescue the people that he truly loves in his life. But with that, we'll move on to number four on my list, who is Peter Pan, from the movie Peter Pan. Now, Peter Pan, the boy who never grows up and who is also quite a bit of trouble. <laughs> For his purpose, Peter Pan is the main character in his movie. He serves as the character that brings the darling children to Neverland, shows them all around the island, rescues them from danger, and then brings them back to their home in England. For his character design, he is a young boy with red hair and a green outfit, and a shadow that gets loose every once in a while. <laughs> and funnily enough, he has a pair of pan pipes, which not only give him fun musical moments, but also is a callback to his name. Peter Pan was wonderfully voice acted by actor Bobby Driscoll, and while Peter specifically doesn't sing in his movie, his movie does have quite a few songs that are just absolutely fantastic. And as for his heroic act, he not only saves Tinkerbell, but also all of the darling children 
from Captain Hook and safely brings them all back home. And I guess it's arguable that he also saves Neverland from Captain Hook as well. So yes, while he is quite a bit of trouble, I think he is an absolutely iconic character that can still be seen in the Disney parks to this day. And I think it's relatively safe to say that he, both physically and emotionally, is not growing up anytime soon. <laughs> But with that, we are moving on to number three on my list, who is Bruno Madrigal from Encanto. Bruno was an instant favorite of mine upon the release of Encanto, and I think he's just such an awesome character. And funnily enough, he actually doesn't have quite a lot of screen time, but the screen time that he does have, he makes quite a big impact. For the purpose in his movie, he serves as the mysterious character that really doesn't show up until probably halfway through his movie. And while we may not see him as much, we definitely hear about him quite a lot. There are entire songs around him, but also entire scenes of dialogue where the characters each give their interpretation of him. Some of them think he's mysterious, some think he's scary, but really he's just a really sweet guy who is very misunderstood for the powers that were given to him by the miracle. For his character design, he has a head of thick curly hair, much like his niece Mirabelle, and he wears a relatively simple green outfit. And its purpose is actually quite interesting considering his power, which is being able to see the future also has quite a bit to do with green, considering the tiles that he's able to create are also green. The character of Bruno was wonderfully voice acted by John Leguizamo. Bruno very briefly sings in All of You, and as for his heroic act, he, much like Mirabelle, is a very large part of the reason as to why the miracle gets saved at the very end. He is not only guidance for his niece, but also the glue that brings his family back together. He is such a lovable and quirky character that you can't help but absolutely love him, and along with all of his quirks, he is quite heroic. And with that, we are moving on to number two on my list, who is Quasimodo from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now, I love this character so much. There are so few characters like Quasimodo, and while many of the characters are frightened by him in the movie, it is so incredibly sweet to see Esmeralda and Phoebus really create a genuine friendship with him, and see him for who he is on the inside. As for the purpose in his movie, Quasimodo is the leading character. He is the titular character, the hunchback in Hunchback of Notre Dame. As for his character design, Quasimodo is described by his name, which is given to him by his master, Frollo. Quasimodo means half-formed. He is is a hunchback character. However, what I love about this character is none of the physical character attributes, which can be described in his movie as scary, really affect him as a character. He can do everything that everybody else can. Considering this character was based on a character originally in a novel, but later, one of the original Hollywood monsters, Quasimodo in the Disney film really isn't a monster. He's just a wonderfully sweet soul who is maybe just a little naive to the world outside of Notre Dame. And all of that is because of the true monster in his film, Frollo. But Quasimodo was wonderfully voiced by Tom Hulse, and he has some beautiful music in his movie, including the wonderful ballad Out There, as well as Heaven's Light and a Heaven's Light reprise. And just to throw in, in the theatrical version, there is another incredible ballad at the end called Made of Stone that is absolutely fantastic, although this song doesn't appear in the original animated movie. And as for his heroic act, he successfully defeats Frollo, frees Esmeralda, and saves the city of Paris, literally being carried on the shoulders of the Parisian citizens. Oh my god, this character is so wonderful, and I am so happy that Quasimodo is finally being recognized by the Disney company, newly appearing in Fantasmic and also in the Happily Ever After fireworks show at the Magic Kingdom. It has been quite a long time since we have seen him in the parks, and he is finally getting the recognition that he so deserves. I love this character and cannot speak enough praise about him. And with that, we have reached number one on my list of favorite Disney heroes. Can you guess who it is? If you can't, I only have one question to ask you. Who puts the glad in gladiator? <laughs> and if you still couldn't tell by that funny little quote, it is Hercules from the movie Hercules. Now this character truly has it all. We see him when he is young and when he is all grown up. We see him at both high moments and low moments. We see him as a wonderfully dedicated, honest and sincere partner around Megara and a true friend 
to Phil and Pegasus. Hercules is of course the protagonist of his film as he is the namesake for the movie. For his character design, he starts off as a relatively skinny teenager in Grecian robes, but later has an upgrade to a really muscly demigod who also has a really great outfit. And I also have to mention yet another redhead on this list of incredible heroes. And as for the voice performance, adult Hercules was performed by Tate Donovan, teenage Hercules was voice acted by Josh Keaton, and the singing voice of teenage Hercules is Roger Bart. For the song in his movie, Hercules has the beautiful ballad, Go the Distance. This song is so wonderful and has such an exciting build to it, which happens both before and after he speaks with Zeus, his father. And as for his act of heroism, it is outlined in the movie that he risks his own life to save the life of Megara. This is actually quite an interesting point to discuss with Hercules, considering this is his dilemma throughout the entire movie. He spends his movie trying to become a true hero by trying to save the city of Thebes from all of the evil that it faces. However, this doesn't necessarily make him a hero, but more so a celebrity. So it's really interesting to hear the take on not every celebrity is a hero, Hero and not every hero is a celebrity. And this is something Hercules has to learn throughout the story. But of course, it is his act of heroism in saving Megara and risking his own life for her that has his godhood restored. However, even more interesting is that he decides he does not wish to become a part of the gods, but rather to stay on earth with Meg. How sweet of a person can you possibly find and a true hero of all things? And that is what earns Hercules number one on my list of Disney heroes. And that just about wraps it up. Thank you so much for joining me today on this list of Disney heroes. I had so much fun talking about all of these awesome male Disney characters. If you liked today's video, make sure to like it down below and leave me a little comment as to which characters would have reached the top of your Disney hero list. And also make sure to subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me. Because at this point, I have videos coming out every single Friday at 5 p.m. And you should totally make sure that you never miss out on them. And also make sure to tell me down below which videos you want to see from me in the future. After I do a lot of my ranking videos, I definitely want to get into a lot of movie and character analyses. There are a lot of really interesting facts about these characters in movies. Make sure to tell me which characters and movies you are interested in so that way I know which ones I should prioritize. As always, thank you so much for watching. It is you guys that make this channel so incredibly magical. But until I see you next, have a magical rest of your week and I will see you all real soon.